Hello there. In this video, I'm going to show you how I would go about digitizing this logo. Now, this is a fake logo, um, but it is a good representation of what you might encounter when you are trying to digitize a logo. So this particular image, it's kind of blurry because I scaled it up. Um, and how I got this image in here, well, I just copied and pasted it from email. But if you have that image file somewhere on your computer, if you go into create mode here and you have Stitch Artist, you'll see a button over here that says image. When you click on it, then you see your computer hard drive and you can actually just import a JPEG image um, into Imbrilliance and you can use that as the basis for digitizing. If you don't see it once you bring it in, you might need to just click this little button up here to make it visible. Okay, so let's start with the easiest shape right here. Well, before we start digitizing, let's first take a look at size. It's always a good idea to digitize at the size you want to, that you're going to stitch it out at. Um, this is about, oh, let's see, each grid is an inch. So this is about an inch and a half, two and a half, three and a half, about four inches tall. That's kind of bigger than what I need it to be. So I'm just going to scale it down a little bit before I get started. All right, now let's zoom in quite a bit. And I'm going to start with this blue piece right here. Now I know this is going to be stitched last because it's most in the foreground, but I think it's the simplest thing to explain, to digitize. I'm going to use my Bezier pen tool here, and I'm just going to click. And when I encounter a, a curve part, I'm just going to click and drag. And you're thinking, wow, you're not doing a very good job of matching that curve. And I'm not, but that's okay because I can go back and edit it. And so you can see that the more I drag, the more I am affecting that curve. So I'm just, and this is going to look wonky right there, but I can come back and fix it. And here I'm making this shape. All right. So what I've created right now, when I want to get to the end and close it, I just click this button right here. And now I have a closed shape. I want to change these points at the ends. So I'm going to click on them and I'm going to right click and make them a cusp. And because they're a cusp, then I can kind of uh, make it a pointy piece right there to give it more of the shape that I'm looking for. All right. Um, and I'm just going to mess with my anchor points and handles. I'm going to do the same thing with this button over here. I'm going to make this a cusp and I can manipulate this further and to get a better sense of my shape. All right, but once I have the object made, then I can apply a fill to it. So I'm going to click on this button right here, and now my shape is filled with stitches, and we can really see how wonky my digitizing is. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what this yellow line indicates here is the direction of the stitches. If I shift that a bit, do you see how that changed the angle of the stitches. Now I could play with different patterns if I want to. You know, the stitch pattern has really like nothing to do with the graphics. So as the digitizer, you have some artistic freedom here. Okay, so let's just leave that piece the way it is and let's go digitize this shape right here. I'm gonna use a different tool. I'm gonna to use my um, column tool to create the shape because I want to create, well, you'll see in just a second. So I'm going to start right here because my, then my, well, I don't need, since this swish is going to go above the shield, I don't need to have stitches in there. So I'm just going to hold down my command key because it, well, you'll see in just a second, I'm going to hold down my command key and start to define this column. I released my command key here because it's a point. Then I hold it down again, and you'll see that the command, when I hold it down, it creates more of a curve. All right, so let's just go with that. Again, it's not perfect and it's the wrong color. But I'm gonna create another column over here. Um, maybe another control point here. And I released the command key because I wanted a point there. And again, I've got some problems with my curve, but that's okay. I'll go back and fix them. Do that. And 
I'm gonna just gonna keep going like I love the way it's looking right now, even though I have to go back and fix it. And let's continue on down. Okay, and now you see I created a column where the stitches are going perpendicular to my column. And again, I might, I might want to turn this into a cusp and that way I can drag that handle down and achieve that curve. Okay, that doesn't look too bad here. I may want to adjust this. And you can see that I have a lot more inclination lines, those yellow lines that control the direction of the stitches. So that looks a little wonky. Why don't we make this a cusp and then we can get that curve to follow that a little bit better. Um, can we change this to a cusp? Yeah, and then I can drag that into place. Okay, so let's just assume this looks perfect. Now we need to digitize the letter and we're gonna use the column, the, I don't love that inclination line, so let's just move that like that. Okay, that looks better. Now, with this E, I might wanna zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to use my column tool again, once again, and this is really easy because it's pretty much straight. So I'm not gonna hold down the command key that makes it a curve. I'm just going to click, click, click. Okay, that looks a little bit wonky, but that's okay, we can fix that. That we could pull that up right there. Okay, and um, then I'm going to, and you can see that I'm not really concerning myself with color at all whatsoever. I'm just creating columns that match the shape of the E. We can come back to that. Okay, and all I have to do is one final part right here. And I've covered my E. Now I could tweak it some more and make sure it's gonna look appropriate, but I'm not gonna worry about it too much. So let's play with color. First, let's go back up to our top object, which is our fill, and I'm going to click on the color swatch and I am going to choose the thread color that I want to use. If I just, if, if, if we've already talked to the customer, for example, and they know that they want it to look like uh, Metro's Maya Blue, then I, I would choose that. Now you can see the problem with the stitch order. We definitely want this to appear in the foreground. So I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna say move last. Okay, now I have my shield shape and that's actually, well, it's this object and this object. Okay, they're not next to each other. I'm gonna go ahead and move these two pieces next to each other. And then let's change this color to, um, well, let's change it to this dark scarlet just because I like it. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to branch it. And by branching it, what it does is it's going to stitch it like all in one piece. And you see that this green and this red line appeared. That's the starting, or diamond, that's the starting point and the ending point of the stitching. So I'm just gonna leave it for now. I'm gonna do the same thing with my E shape and I'm gonna shift select all of the pieces and then I'll branch it. And again, this is the start and the end place right here. Now, if I stitched out, if I look at my stitch simulator, you can see right now I have the E. And do you see what branching did? It made it act like it's all one object. And so it's gonna stitch it nicely without any kind of jump stitches in that particular shape. Now it's jumping down here to start that. Well, it might be more efficient if we end here to start over here. So I can change my in and out points of each of my objects if I want. And then with the purple shield, I might wanna end it, my stitching, really close to here perhaps, and then start the blue right in there. 
So we can do that um, if we go back into create mode and change the start and end point. So if we start here and end here with the E, then maybe with the purple, I want to, um, I want to start it here and end it there. And then with the blue, I, 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 I can start it here and end it there. So this should stitch out fairly and nicely. Um, you can also make tie-offs at the ends of each one of these objects right here. So if I choose tie at entry, tie at exit, that's like an extra secure stitch to keep it from unraveling. So that might be something we want to do too. Once you're done, then all you have to do is save it out as a, you probably want to save the stitch in the working file. The working file will let you go back and you manipulate those objects again. The stitch file is what you want to send to the customer or what you want to test stitch out before sending this file back to the customer to make sure it stitches out nicely. So that is how you would digitize a very simple logo in Imbrilliance Stitch Artist.